down. Uh, Miley. Good boy. Like I always compare a rescue to trying to catch a waterfall with a, a wine glass, because there's just so many, there's so many of them. Oh, you got dogs like this and dogs like this that, you know, uh, people step up and help and the support they receive is wonderful. And then there's, there's terrible, horrible things that you see that just will haunt you forever. A lot of people that do this, uh, like especially like the transports and the runs and everything, uh, yeah, you usually have a breakdown the day or two after when it all finally just like hits you. It takes me a couple of days to like decompress from all of it. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's probably had as much of a negative impact on my mental health as it has like a positive one. The dogs will break your heart and crush your soul and they'll also uh, mend your heart and heal your soul. We're just coming back from a little meeting to plan our upcoming transport. It's, uh, we're calling it a mashup transport and it's three organizations. We're gonna work together and we're gonna get all the dogs back. So that's October 17th, the dogs are coming home. We are hoping to bring at least 100 animals home. Um, and get as many dogs out of the elements before winter hits as we possibly can. Uh, we have two vans going, so we're, we're gonna get a lot of animals, that's for sure. And some cats, because why not cats? I am an electrician by day. I, I don't take a lot of joy in it. I, I just do it for the money. It's a respectable career. I just wanted something in my life that would, you know, enhance it as opposed to stress me out like work does. So uh, rescue also stresses me out, but it's a, it's a different kind of stressed. Come on, look, everyone else is outside. You can do it. Come on. Okay. No. Nope. She'll learn when we come in. Okay, come on out, the rest of you. Come on. Larry is originally from Norway House Cree Nation in Northern Manitoba. I met him on the transport morning and he was just a, a shattered dog. Oh man. Oh, he is full of affection. Yeah, that's, that's not good. He got in the way of a pack of dogs, a pack of male dogs that was going after a female in heat. And, uh, he just got ripped apart. This ear is pretty much destroyed. The canal is totally closed. Most of it is gone. I never fostered Larry. Larry's uh, not a, was never a foster dog. I, uh, he's old and I just said, just give him to me, please. I'll, I'll take him. We try not to take any money from the frontline rescue in Winnipeg. We try and feed them as much donations and everything as we can, because they're overwhelmed as it is. It does cost me a lot, and I'd rather the donations go to the dogs, like I have a job. So you don't do it obviously for the money, so what are you doing it for? Uh, for the dogs. Wait, there, leave it, leave it. The dogs are going to arrive in the Greater Toronto Area October 17th, 2021. It's a very high adrenaline like trip and it's go mode for me. Like I'm in go mode for four straight days um, and I'm already a very like anxious person. It's a stressful trip. Like we say to give the dogs like, you know, a good three days to three weeks to decompress. Uh, it takes me a solid three days and I'm consciously aware of what I'm getting into before I get into it. It can get rough and then you add to that all of the the horror that you see and it's it gets rough sometimes but 
Uh, it just takes one good dog and it's fine, you know? We have a spot that we meet at just outside of Winnipeg, like just on the city limits on the Trans-Canada Highway. We unload all the crates from the van, we line them all up, everyone brings their dog as the dog gets into the crate, we check it off on the list, label it, load it, and then we're off. this dog. They're actually saving a lot of lives by doing this transport mission. Transport alone, I mean, nobody wants to do it. It's a tough job. Without them, we wouldn't be able to have the dogs down here. So some of your dogs might have medicine. Please don't leave. Until you checked with one of the drivers, we have lists. Okay. One of these is your dogs. One. And I think these are all yours. They are. Hi, baby. Oh, you're okay. I'm sure they'll find good homes. Okay, Mama. Yeah, we had her up front with us. They'll be good with you. Yeah, we can do that. Look how cute these cats are. They're so cute. Spare your cats. Yeah. Doing one of these runs is like a five month fun but toxic relationship condensed into three days. There's love, there's hate, there's sorrow, there's pain, there's joy. And it's exhausting. And it's exhausting. But worth every second. Yeah. <laughs> this is Wilbur. Say hello. Only five weeks old. He was found on one of the reserves. I think it might have been blood vein. I'm not sure though. Like the night before we left, they found out. All by himself. We're going to Oakville to drop off another round of dogs. That's where this van finishes and it ends. And then that van from Oakville will go to Oshawa. Do one more, one more drop off. So we still got quite a day ahead of us. Uh, we're gonna stop here for just a little bit, go to a little puppy party, and then continue on our way. Good job, guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, guys. Thank you. 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 Thank you
thank you all so much. This, this means a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy your dogs. Yeah. That's Mama Jasmine. Okay, wow. Definitely oh, none of them look now. anything like her. That was a birthday party for some puppies that were born last year on our October transport. Six hours of puppies coming and a transport we will never forget. We got two more stops to go and uh, we'll be, uh, yeah, more, more happy endings in Oakville, Oshawa, and then I'm coming back here to pick up my own mutts and uh, get home to them. Maybe, maybe get to sleep tonight. <laughs> we'll see. And back to work tomorrow? Yeah, of course. Gotta go to work. <laughs>